Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and in today's video we're going to be making three cards using just this single die set and of course some other products from my stash. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. iCrafter reached out to me and asked me if I would like to be a guest designer for them for August and September. And before I agreed to anything, I went and checked out their website, and after seeing the stamps and dies and other items that they sell, I was like, yes, please sign me up. So I got to choose two items, and I will be sharing a video this month and next month with you using those. For this month, I'm going to be using the Dash Circles die set that's in front of me here, and next month I will be sharing with you some projects using one of their fall stamp sets. I do have quite a few sets of nesting dies in my stash, but what I don't have a lot of is nesting circles dies that also cut a decoration into it. And this set of five dies, there are dashed lines on the inside of the cut and the outside of the cut. So I thought that this would make some quick, easy, interesting cards, and that's why I chose this one. Now, I hope that after watching today's video, you'll go check out their online store. They do have lots of great stamps, dies, some of them even the fun interactive ones. I will have their store linked in that description box below for you to check out. Once I get started on the process of today's cards, I will go to a voiceover and I will let you know about any other products or tools that I will be bringing in to use. But as always, if I leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. The first thing I'm gonna do in today's video is leave all of the dies on this card and run it through my die cutter. Now I'm doing this because right now these dies are super evenly spaced and I can get concentric rings die cut if I leave them on there. It did leave a little indentation on the carrier card, but nothing that is going to hamper that later on. Once I had all of those rings, I then off screen cut a piece of scrap white cardstock with the largest die. I ended up with four rings when I cut them all together on the card, and now I'm going to ink each of them up in a different color. This is a good way to color your cardstock and kind of make it customized to what you need. I chose four kind of in a rainbow order and I'm just going to ink each one of those and you'll see here that Lyndon did try to join me and help she wasn't the biggest helper but she was interested in what I was doing after all of those were inked up I brought in that other piece that I die cut the one using the largest circle and what I'm gonna do now is adhere all my rings onto this kind of as a base now for the biggest one I put my liquid glue on there and then when I put it down on the base I did make sure to turn it so that what you saw through the holes on the pink circle was the white cardstock from underneath instead of having the holes line up so you saw through it and this was just so when I went to adhere the remaining circles that it was just consistently white in those openings once all of the rings were on the circle I set this to the side to dry for about five minutes and once those had had some time to dry I brought in my little trimmer so I could cut this in half the largest circle is four inches so I lined it up on the two inch mark and made my slice now I have two perfect semicircles that are going to be used as rainbows on today's cards. Because rainbows are open in the center, I just brought in a pair of fine tip scissors and cut away the white cardstock that you could see from the base piece. 
I chose a gray ink and a sentiment from my stash to go on the first card. It reads, you make me smile. And just to ensure that I had it placed where I wanted it under the rainbow, I did place the rainbow and the background cardstock in my Misty before stamping it. Once I had stamped it a couple times to get a little bit darker shade of gray, I then took that piece back over to my die cutter and ran it through there with a dots embossing folder. This just adds some extra interest and texture when you have all of that white in the background. Now all of my individual pieces were ready so I could start putting my card together. Off camera I cut a piece of pink cardstock for the mat on the embossed white piece and I placed those onto the front of a gray cardstock base. Then to make it kind of easier to see the personal message inside, I added a scrap of white cardstock there before bringing in my big blue roll of foam tape and adding that to the back of the rainbow. Once all the foam tape was on there, I pulled that release paper and I placed my rainbow centered onto the card front. Before I could call this card finished, I did bring in some clear gems and I placed three to each side of my sentiment, kind of in a triangle shape. And I did place them where the embossed dots were, just so I knew the spacing would be consistent. Before I show you how I use the second rainbow, let's go ahead and look at a completely different card. I started this one out by tacking down a piece of craft cardstock in the center of my Misty, and then I inked up a wood grain background stab with some craft ink and stamp that onto there. Now I did have to ink it up and stamp it a couple times to get a good impression, but I like kind of like the rougher look of this on that craft cardstock. Once the background was stamped, I brought in the two largest dies from the set and I placed these toward the top center of that stamped piece. What I want to do is cut out kind of a window there and you'll notice here I'm using some low tack tape to hold this in place. I will be able to reuse this same tape later and it doesn't tear the paper or cardstock when I run it through the die cutter. Off camera I cut and folded a craft card base and I am going to temporarily tack down the large stamped piece as well as those two inner circles because I want to know where that center one will go when all of the pieces are together later. This piece, the inner circle, will get adhered just flat down onto the card front in that opening. The opening on the front of this card will be kind of like a window to the card base itself. So I brought in a scrap of lightweight clear cardstock and I adhered that behind the opening. Then with that leftover ring, I used some liquid glue and I adhered this in the large opening. Now you'll notice here that I did line it up so that the pattern did not match and that was on purpose. I just wanted a little bit more separation between the background and the kind of window frame piece. While that was drying, I brought in a couple pieces that I had die cut off screen. On the left is the silhouette of a butterfly with a pink ombre background paper. And then on the right is a vellum detail cut of that same butterfly. I adhered this so the body was the only thing that was stuck down to the background piece. And then I placed three clear gems where the body of the butterfly would be. Now, once I had those in place, I did try to like kind of fold up the wings so there was a little dimension on that and you could see more of the detail in the smaller die cut. The butterfly then got adhered to the wood grain piece that was already on the card front. I tried to make it fit as best as I could so you could see the entire butterfly on just the wood grain piece. Then I brought in some foam tape for the window part, added that to the back, and then I placed this onto the front of my card. Now my thought was here, like, you know, you see people who, you know, collect the butterflies or, you know, put butterflies in frames. This is kind of like a display case for a butterfly or like a shaker window without the shaker bits. 
Once again, to finish this card off, I wanted to add some gems to the front. Now you'll see here that I placed five on the front originally, but before I do the little final look, you'll see that I adjusted them just a little bit. So I would have only two in the upper left and then three in the bottom right. And now we're gonna make a card with that final rainbow. To get started on this one, I brought in my Misty merely just to be a holder while I stencil. I have a piece of Strathmore Bristol Smooth that is six by six, and I will be using a set of homemade layered stencils to stencil kind of a rainbow of colors in the background of this piece. While I work on that stenciling, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or question of the video. These are usually just fun little questions, sometimes crafty, sometimes not, so that we can get to know a little bit more about each other. Today's question is, when was the last time you used a stencil for a card making project? Let me know in the comment section below. And don't forget to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know that you've answered and would like me to see it. I don't use stencils probably as much as I should, but I have been trying to use them more and more. The last project that I created with a stencil is the one you see on screen now. I used one to stencil the little kind of watercolor background wash behind the mason jar. Once my piece was all stenciled, I cut it down to five and a half by four and a quarter, and then I also did some other things off screen. I stamped my sentiment, which says you're an inspiration onto a cloud die, and I also cut one in reverse. This piece of vellum is 17 pound, and it is cut to four and a half by three and a quarter. I also pre-cut and folded a white card base. All of the individual pieces for the card are now done, so I just put it together. I place the clouds on each side of the rainbow, trying to align it and center it as best as I could. Then I place the vellum piece centered onto the stencil piece, and I just put a little adhesive right in the center because that will be covered up later by the rainbow. This piece then got adhered to the front of the card base and to put the rainbow onto the card front I do want to pop it up so I brought back in my big blue roll of foam tape and added some pieces to the back of that. Now when I go to place the rainbow onto the card front I do place it so it covers up most of that white circle in the middle and kind of off to the right. That cloud does hang off just a little bit, so I brought in my pair of scissors and just cut off the excess. Once again, before I call this card finished, I did add some clear gems, kind of in a line from the upper left to the bottom right. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together today's quick and easy cards using the iCrafter Dashed Circles die set. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.